Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to look at modifying our while loop from the last lesson and create something called a do while loop. Now, in our while loop, one of the things that we have to pay attention to is that the condition must be true for the while loop to run at all. So there's a chance that at the beginning of the condition, the while loop is never true and it will never run at all. The reason why that could be a problem is you might want the while loop to run at least one time just to test to make sure that the condition is true. So for example, if you're getting input from the user, you might want to check to see if the user has uh, at least entered a value one time. Now one way of doing that would be to read the value then start the while loop and then within the while loop read the value again. So if we look at our code from yesterday or from the last class, that's kind of what we did. If we look at this while loop here, right, we had our button state and we did a digital read of our button state. So that was before the while loop. But then in the while loop, we read the button state again. So suppose we wanted to change this. So that way we didn't have to have this redundancy where we have to read the button state twice. Well, I'm going to modify this code. I'm going to get rid of this line right here. And I'm going to take this condition and take it out. And I'm going to move it down here to the bottom. Now you have to put a semicolon here because now that is the end of the statement. And we're going to start with a do. So this is called a do while loop. It basically flips the condition and puts it at the end of the loop rather than the beginning of the loop. So when the computer comes to this, it says, okay, do these statements first. Then check to see what the condition is. If the condition is true, then go back up and do the statements again. So the testing of the condition happens at the end of the loop rather than the beginning of the loop. Now this shouldn't make too much of a difference in our actual simulation here because in our case all we did is really just eliminate an extra line of code that we didn't knew, need by restructuring our while loop. So let's go back, let me change my zoom level here. And we'll go back and take a look at our code to make sure it's still working. So we initialize it. And you can see it's still blinking. And when I press down the button, it blinks faster. So there's no actual difference in the way it performs, except it is now more efficient code. There's something to be said for having efficient code. When you write code, you want to try to make it run as fast and efficiently on your computer as possible your computer does have a limited amount of memory. Your Arduino has smaller memory than almost any computer you have worked on. So we have to be very conscious of the amount of memory we require the computer to have and use. By adding that extra digital read command, we are taking some resources away from the computer. So by eliminating that digital read and just flipping our condition around, it gives us the ability to get our data a lot better. So that's all we have about our digital, our do while loop. I hope you learned something. See you next time.